Voy a empezar a hablar en, en inglés. I'll start speaking English to introduce the last presentation of this conference. Yeah. Uh, we have the honor of having Mark Wigley here in Chile for the second time in one year. Um, Mark Wigley is the Dean of the Graduate School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation of Columbia University in the city of New York since 2004, isn't it? More or less? Yeah. Uh, and the person who transformed this school into one of the most active places to think and to question architecture, not only in New York, but also abroad to a a GSAP Global Network he created. Um, along with Philip Johnson, he was the curator of the mythical exhibition, The Constructivist Architecture, at the Museum of Modern Art in New York in 1988. And since then, uh, Mark Wheelie has been one of the most interesting contemporary thinkers of architecture. His publications include Architecture of the Construction, uh, White Walls, Designer Dresses, The Fashion of Modern Architecture, uh, Constance New Babylon, The Hyper Architecture of Desire, among others. So today, and continuing the debate on public space, he will take this discussion further, we hope, uh, presenting, <laughs> yeah, presenting the work he has developed as Dean uh, and the ways he invented for GSAP to influence and impact not only the public space, uh, but also the public sphere with the presentation GSAP at the public sphere. So fasten your seatbelts and enjoy Mark Wheelie. <laughs> Yeah, that, that works. No, this is fine. So uh, thank you, Francesco, and Clara, and, and uh, Karen. There will be a reception in 30 minutes. <laughs> so just think about that. So I, I, I will speak in English, which means that you don't have to listen. Uh, but think of the reception. Uh, so I, I'm going to replace one colonial language, Spanish, with another one, uh, English. Uh, it could be two crimes. Uh, the question is, who, who, who cares for Chilean cities with this emphasis on, on, on uh, public space? Um, but that question, which I think is great and has been a, a, a wonderful uh, uh, Congress, uh, presupposes that we know what a Chilean city is. Then, so then we could say, who, who takes care of that? Actually, it, it assumes that we know what, what, what uh, Chile is. And um, I'm not so sure that we know what, what Chile is. And, and actually, I'm not so sure that you know uh, what it is, because you have the problem, of course, that you are Chilean. So it's almost impossible for you to have any kind of understanding uh, of Chile. You, you have, in a way, uh, too much knowledge which means also n not enough, uh, because you're right in the, in, in the, in the middle of it. Uh, the discovery of Chile, I think not, not by accident, exactly coincides with the production of the first world map. Uh, e even it's linked to M M Magellan's uh, journey. And of course, the whole, whole point I want to make about the world maps is that uh, what is known in the map is the water. The water is not dangerous and mysterious. It is known, it is mathematical. Uh, what is uh, uh, confusing uh, is the land. And, the, and so the discovery of the land is, is the drawing of a line, very uh, tentative line, but this is understood to be the beginning of the drawing of the first scientific map. Uh, and by scientific, they mean that it has exactly the mathematics of the water. And of course, in this particular moment, uh, What's amazing is what you would think, is sometimes this is referred to as, of course, a, the, coming from the moment of discovery of Chile, but Chile actually exists on the map only as a kind of gap. And, it, it's, uh, <laughs> and, and it's actually, it's only a gap because you think you know where Chile is. But for example, if this map was accurate, there would be this enormous amount of water uh, where, 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 where Chile is. And, and, and it takes a long time for the other side of this map, uh, as, you, as you know, to be uh, 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 completed. It looks like the same map, but it's actually the same map drawn again by the same person twice. Every detail has changed, but it's more or less the same. So it's not like accidental map. It's really an uh, incredible, s serious map. There were only seven of these maps. Uh, and they were secret maps. They were military maps of Spain drawn by a Portuguese man working for the Spanish government using the knowledge coming from a Portuguese 
sailor, so probably I should be speaking Portuguese uh, if I don't want to be a, a, cr a criminal. Because in that sense, Chile, if, a, as a European invention, is, is a Port Portuguese invention. Uh, then even when this map is copied by a German, uh, the, the, the huge gap becomes even uh, uh, clearer. And I think this is a very precise map. This is not a map that's unfinished. This is a really accurate image. Um, now, uh, this is New Zealand, the first, this, in the bottom corner here. This is the first time it was discovered. I am from, and by the way, I'm from further south. I think of Chile as being in, in the north. And, and uh, uh, here we are, I think, 1642 uh, is the first encounter with New Zealand. And then uh, they have one side of what we think of now as Australia. And then they have a piece of New Zealand. They don't know if, if this is the same thing or not. Uh, eventually, of course, New Zealand will become a long, thin uh, island, and it was a great discovery for me, f visiting Santiago de Chile just a few months ago, to discover that Chile is absolutely an island, and I felt completely at home here for this reason. Uh, I mean, it's just obvious. Uh, this is the most impossible invention, uh, and it is absolutely an island, not just because mountains on one side, but water on the other, but also the psychology that I know very, very well, which is why I was so happy to come back, because I think more or less I belong on, on your island. Um, but then again, you might think of the island as being land with water around it, but that's also a mistake. Really, really the island is more like uh, water, um, like this, uh, like a very, very strange uh, place. Because again, uh, what is home and what is close is the most unknown, the most uh, strange. Like your family is the strangest. Uh, I mean, whoever, whoever invented the idea of the family invented, uh, well, psychological problems, uh, gaps, mis mysteries, and so on. Confusion, doubt. The, ver the, the invention of the family is also the invention of, the, of making it very difficult to, dr to draw a, a, a line. It, it, can I draw a line between myself and my mother? No. Well, actually, I'm coming from out of my mother. So pre precisely, I can only draw a line between the mother and myself by actually cutting uh, quite violently the connection uh, between us. So the invention of that which is close is the invention of mystery. Uh, so maybe it should be thought of something like this. Uh, but, but of course, one of the most amazing things about this island, which in theory is full of mystery and water, it has also the one place in the world with no water. So one of the great uh, powerful attractions of the island of Chile is that it has a place where there is never any water. And as a result, it, it has the clearest vision in the world, which means this is now the part of the world from which we look to the other planets. So now the maps that we make, which took such a long time to find the island of Chile, now on that island we draw the next maps, which are the maps of the, uh, of the galaxies and so on. So all of the strangeness of Chile, and I'm so proud, of course, the strangeness of the South, that it is now the South that took so long to be discovered, uh, let's say, in the West uh, uh, by, by Europe, now acts as actually the, the place where I think all the Europeans are here, <laughs> here trying to look at, 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 at the other uh, uh, planets, which is great. Um, but we now know more about life on Mars uh, and by the way, that was the big question, did Mars have water or not? So in this place it has no water, we try to understand if Mars had water, because if it had water it could have uh, life, right? Um, we know more about what it would mean to live on Mars than what it means to live in cities on, on Earth. So in the year 2050 there will be 7 billion people living in cities. Uh, no one knows what that means. I mean, for example, this is a room full of experts. Uh, even experts on, on, on cities. We're e even here in this spaceship flying over uh, the city, like uh, speaking about the public from on high, <laughs> without any irony. Uh, but, but we really don't know what this, this organism that is uh, uh, below us, which is why, of course, we pull ourselves out for a moment like this. Um, we should decide very quickly what is happening with cities because seven billion people in cities is, is, a, is, a, is the biggest experiment in human history. Uh, and so what I was asked to speak a little bit, what's the relationship between university today and cities and then maybe Chilean cities and then if, if Chilean cities, then public space. 
in Chilean cities? Well, I think it's pretty obvious that cities are evolving more quickly than universities. So if a university is a stupidity reduction machine, it is, uh, our ability to be less stupid about cities is going down because cities are moving more quickly than uh, universities. Um, university did go through a revolution when it went, it was 11th, you know, universities invented in the 11th century to protect uh, knowledge, not to invent knowledge, but with the beginning of the research university, you have the beginning of, of engagement with the world. So the mechanism of the university goes from disconnection, that you disconnect from the world to reflect. Uh, then with the research university, you engage with the world, but the mechanism is the, is the laboratory. So you have inside the university a space for experimentation where you will develop knowledge that can be applied in, in, in the world, right? Um, but today, what happens in our cities is more experimental than what happens in any laboratory in any university. So you could even say that the real laboratory is, is here uh, uh, in the city. That means for the university, it must turn itself inside out. Instead of being a secure place with laboratories very protected on the inside, you actually have to place the university into the laboratory which exists. So instead of a, a laboratories inside a university, you need a university inside a laboratory. Right? So if, if, if a university would turn itself inside out and place itself in the city, then you will have something uh, new. Columbia University is called officially Columbia University in the city of New York. So it is actually uh, based on the idea of being embedded in the city, but then it, it is protected from the city with, with walls, uh, with expensive tuition, with uh, protocols uh, and so on. M many, many ways in which the classical idea of disconnection is established even the, in the middle of the city. Uh, and actually, you know this is something about cities, that a city is actually exactly a place where you can disconnect. Uh, precisely because there's so much happening, you can actually create a space, quiet, quiet space in a, in a city. So I think the university has to turn itself in, inside out. That means also, uh, uh, confusing the line between the inside and the outside of the university, between one discipline and another, between professional and academic, between education and work. I think the idea that you first do education and then you work uh, is, uh, is gone. Now you, every form of work is a form of education. Every professional who's working with cities has to have a research capacity in order to engage directly. And in reverse, every university needs kind of professional uh, 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 knowledge. My general uh, uh, thesis would be, just for a moment, uh, but I, I warned you not to listen, um, is that um, not only the university has to turn itself inside out, but the university should not be analyzing public space, but, but should be uh, producing public space. So it's not a, also a question of saying, let's meet the public in the city, as if the city is a natural habitat for the, for the public. The university has to concede, consider itself as a producer of, of, uh, of public space. But public space, I don't mean the, the space of the square, uh, of the park, or of the street, street which are, of course, incredibly uh, important. Perhaps, but perhaps they are only important to produce an image of the public. They are um, actually a media. Uh, media apparatus rather than uh, actually a social uh, 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 mechanism. And of course, for social change, you need images. And we have seen in the last five years the most uh, uh, important revolutionary use of the image of, of, of uh, classical public space. But I'm thinking, no, public space more in the sense of the economy, of education, of energy, of ideas, of food, and, and, and even images themselves. That is to say, uh, w what are these spaces relative to what we call the uh, uh, public? Uh, I think one possible definition of a city is that it is, it is a machine for sharing and nothing more than this. It's ne there's never anything in a city that's not about the, uh, the, the, the reason that seven billion people are moving towards cities is because the sharing of a city creates uh, magnifies imagination and, and uh, 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 potential. I think that people are not stupid they may be uh, uh, suppressed or repressed, but they are not stupid. They go to cities for a very uh, important reason. So I can explain a little bit uh, the, or not. 
uh, this idea of Studio X, which is which you wanted me to talk about a little bit. It's just an architecture of sharing. Um, so again, maybe this is a different kind of map than the, maybe this is more like a radio broadcast map. Maybe the world of radio, the invisible world of broadcasting is more relevant today, or is the liquid of today? Maybe the liquid is more, more about electronic communication rather than uh, the liquid of the, of the, of the oceans. Um, but this is the sort of Studio X, as, which is some kind of uh, architecture of sharing. Studio X means a room, empty room, studio. X means I have no idea what happens in that room. So, of course, it's some kind of laboratory, but even when you use the word laboratory, you, you seem to know what you mean by that. I don't know what I mean by that. Uh, studio, it's like the artist's studio. So a place, maybe it has nice light, uh, and you can produce in there. Uh, maybe it's like a studio from the university, from the original word for university, which is studi studiolo, right? So a place of study, of reflection. So production and reflection, but also broadcast studio, like a television studio, like a place for, commu for communication. So an empty room, we don't know what happens in there, but there will be a lot of production, a lot of reflection, and a lot of communication. Uh, mainly it's a coffee machine, surrounded by the infrastructure of order ordinary life. Like, like these are all the things that you need in a Studio X, but actually, can you name a space that doesn't need these things? This could also be a definition of a house. Every house now has a kind of gallery, has a global interface, has coffee and so on. Uh, coffee is probably the single most important in ingredient of discourse about uh, public space. Um, if you would remove caffeine from architecture for, for 24 hours, it will be complete collapse. <laughs> Gone. And I don't just mean architecture like architects being creative. I mean the m whole mechanism and machinery of, of, of uh, urban life. If an, if an asteroid hits Earth, Probably uh, half the planet is destroyed, but everything will continue. But 24 hours without coffee, we are finished, as a species, I mean. Um, maybe the network of the Studio X is something like an uh, infrastructure for flowers, like a kind of a pergola, where you organize a structure. It's a little bit geometric. Uh, and then you wait for the, for the garden to grow. The garden could be very French, which means you intimidate the plants and you tell them to pretend to be architecture, so every, every plant is busy trying to be a, a, a building. Or it's more like an English garden where you create an image of, of a little bit confusion and mystery and so on, probably since I'm a victim of the English. Uh, uh, I, I like the English garden, so maybe this is some kind of an English uh, garden. <coughs> you know perfectly that an English garden requires more care than a French one. Uh, French one, you can uh, make the drawings and then give instructions uh, and it's done. English garden is really a permanent uh, uh, painting, so maybe this is a bit tricky, this model of the English garden. I don't know what the a Chilean garden is. Probably it's like New Zealand. The, the word garden makes no sense here because the whole thing is one big garden. Um, but of course, this is, the, this is the Avery Hall. So this is the classical university. Uh, symmetrical, neoclassical, it says we know what the future is, the future is ancient Greece, right? But inside, but, 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 but inside that place, people are really trying to imagine uh, uh, what will be the city f for, for what, what is the most uh, 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 appropriate uh, city, and the students and teachers are coming from 60 different countries, so actually inside there is uh, a, a complete uh, chaos of, of, uh, of ideas. But these are the directors of the different Studio X's around the world. Studio X is also designed for people a little bit like the audience today, which I would describe as uh, post-graduation and pre-vegetation. So that means between, let's say, 25 and 45. Um, it means you are still young. Uh, you are being asked by society to make a very important contribution. You are very good at this contribution, but this contribution is one uh, particular thing. But when you were in university, you absolutely believed that everybody's ideas had to be interconnected, and you imagined that as a new generation, you could address the world's issues. So after graduation before vegetation means you have not yet become, you, you, you don't yet totally believe yourself. So you need to listen again to your uh, uh, friends. You're not quite successful enough uh, to enjoy what you see in the mirror. You are, 
in the evenings wanting to be again with your fellow students. So it is also a kind of continuation of university. Uh, this means, of course, that the curators, the directors of the Studio X, they are not uh, 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 alumnus of Columbia University. They, are, they represent the cities of where the Studio X are, are, are based. They are great. Uh, they're all in completely different places. Studio X sort of looks like this. It's just exhibitions, meetings, talking. Uh, I think there was Clara going by, right, in, in China. Here we are in Amman. Uh, every time you see uh, groups, it's impossible to know who's coming from Columbia, who's coming from the city, who's coming from other universities. It's place, places of radical projects at different times here in Rajiv and Mumbai, uh, constantly agitating. This is Rio. Uh, this is probably the best image of what goes on in a Studio X, a very long shared table. In this table, there are politicians, financial people, social activists, architects, designers, students, working together on a series of designs, which then becomes the exhibition on the bottom left, uh, which is also construction, uh, interventions in the, in the city, um, and so on and so on, working with artists, uh, endless, endless discussion. Uh, but it's also in Tokyo, in Johannesburg, uh, Paris, uh, Sao Paulo, uh, and will open next week in, in Istanbul, and then you get some kind of airline map uh, of, of uh, operations. It's pretty scary because this thing it runs kind of on autopilot, so it's just sort of accelerating. The colors are the, are the different Studio X's, so the different locations. Of course, what's happening is dialogue between the Studio X's. Uh, New York is not in the picture. So this is uh, the opposite of the existing university. So instead of a nuclear reactor model, where wonderful minds come from all over the world, hyper condensed and then explode back out into the world. This is the opposite model, which is completely deterritorialized, and uh, uh, no protection. This was just uh, uh, Rio in the last uh, year, for example. So probably each Studio X now does more than would be normal for a full university department. But they have uh, just one curator, maybe a staff of three people, enormous energy, enormous input. These are not... Uh, uh, branches of Colombia. They are not uh, franchised. They are not extensions of Colombia. This is the very heart of Colombia. This is my main point, is that this is, uh, if you're to be intelligent about cities today, you have to be in a discourse that's global, and by global I mean shared, that you are, are sharing ideas between all different parts of the world, every part of the world being different. Globalization is, has much more to do with difference than, than with similarity. So for a university to reduce stupidity about cities, it needs a kind of basic infrastructure like this. So actually this is sort of super basic. There's nothing e e exotic about it. It's the kind of infrastructure for thinking uh, 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 together. Um, and it, it is linked, of course, to global centers. So we have a great global center here in, in Santiago de Chile, because not only the architecture school does this, but the wider university. So, Getting back to the theme, uh, I don't. There is nothing uh, more interesting about the projects that you that you showed today. I feel like I'm just sharing the project I have been working on, in, which is a bit similar to the projects you have been working on. They overlap, of course, because many times the conversations going on in these places are to do with the kinds of work that you're doing. This is also a research platform, so it will be great if you are using this. Uh, 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 platform and, and in, in a way you are today because this you are uh, guests of uh, Global Center and Latin Lab which are, are working through this network. So just to return very quickly uh, to the question of public space, um, of course there are two potentials that public space means a space for the public or a space uh, defined by the public uh, and as you can imagine I w totally reject these two uh, uh, concepts it cannot be a space for the public, because this always implies that you can draw a line between the public and the uh, 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 private. Um, but that makes no sense. I can create in the public the most private space simply by having my own music. And when I go into my most private uh, house, uh, I, I can be uh, in, in, a, in a broadcast environment, uh, uh, in a kind of global conversation. So I could, I'm probably more public when I'm at home than I am when I'm in the streets, and more private 
uh, in the streets than in, than in my home. That's obvious. That, that's the way we live our life. By the way, the word public can only take meaning in that sense, and likewise the word private. You can only have a concept of private if you have a concept of public and vice versa. So the idea of a space for the public makes no sense at all because uh, space uh, not only can be multiple, it can only be multiple. Space is even the word we use for this multi multiplication. And perhaps if we want to have some uh, concept of what the public is, the public might be defined by a multiplicity or a confusion of lines. So public may have to do with a kind of biodiversity that overwhelms any simple line. Um, is precisely why the public is uh, feared. Even if one cannot say what it is, precisely that's what you are afraid of because the public is a capacity to dissolve any simple uh, uh, line. Uh, the public might be complexity uh, in another sense. But I would equally strongly reject the idea that uh, public space is space by the public, made by the public, as if there's already something called the public out there waiting to make space, like an active force. Uh, public space, I would suggest to you, is not a thing but an action. It's not an a, a object or even a kind of a volume, but it's an action. Maybe it's an action that produces a public by raising the question of a public. So if I make an action in society, which raises a question about what might be the public. This can actually produce that very uh, thing. I think this is exactly what was going on in Taksim Square, et cetera. They, they're making the image, the potential. Uh, they're asking the question, what, what is the public? Where, where is the uh, uh, public? So again, uh, public space will not be about squares, parks, and streets, but perhaps will be about a kind of uh, hospitality. Uh, ho hospitality is, of course, when you uh, welcome the stranger uh, the unknown stranger, n knowing that the unknown stranger will probably change you. So real hospitality is an openness to be ch changed by the other. Perhaps we all go to cities for, for this, that we are welcomed, that we are allowed to change the city, but also that we are changed by the people that we uh, 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 meet. So if, if, if the public is a confusion of uh, line, one of the confusions is the line by which we define ourselves as, as, uh, as individuals. So hospitality is an, is an openness to a kind of evolution in your, in your own uh, uh, self-definition. Uh, it's in this sense that, that the Studio X would like to be an architecture of sharing, that is to say a form of hospitality, knowing that those that will use the Studio X will likely completely change it and change the meaning of it, uh, and, and of course, when you are really uh, a great host, uh, at some moment you lose yourself, that you have created something that makes the... So if I invite someone uh, to dinner, and it's a great dinner, the sign that it's a great dinner is that I'm not the same person I was before I had this amazing evening with this person I hadn't met before. So now the person who invited the, the friend to dinner, or the stranger to dinner, doesn't exist anymore. So one of, the, one of the immediate effects of hospitality, even one of the dreams of hospitality, is to no longer be, your, be, to be yourself, right? So, so in a way, if a university creates the Studio X, it's a, it's a kind of a hospitality which is asking for the university to be changed by the city rather than the uh, university to have some theory about how the city should change. Uh, in, in other words, if, if everybody is uh, going to cities uh, uh, at such a speed that the cities are beyond our control, uh, cities have exactly this capacity to uh, 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 expose the, the uh, uh, potentials. So in fact, what we should be thinking about is what is absolutely amazing about cities that we would therefore like to maximize in the future and then reverse engineer back to today rather than imagine that the city is out of control and impossible, imagine that the future is to have more of the single greatest asset of our species, the city, and then take pleasure in this uh, uh, asset. And it seems to me this asset will have something to do with generosity, that cities are, in theory, uh, generous, which is why when we sense the lack of generosity, when we feel the exclusions and the, the uh, uh, sort of structural uh, poverty, this is against the city. So, so in a certain sense, if, if one uh, 
takes care of the city, it will, it will take care of, uh, uh, of the so-called public. And it seems to me the public is usually defined by a dynamic of exclusion and, and inclusion, mainly exclusion. Mainly the public is defined as a group excluded. Uh, and there's an excluded from an enormous category of, uh, 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 of, uh, of spaces and momentarily included theatrically to act as a, as a disguise or a repression of all the standard moments of uh, 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 exclusion. So if you define the public as that which is excluded, then that public we are thinking about is not the public we are, uh, uh, if you're committed to social justice, you're not interested in the public that has been con excluded because this is the public that has been defined by the forces you wish to work against. So the question is what is a kind of counter public or a kind of uh, in inclusionary public? Uh, I would say then, that again, to repeat myself, that the public is that which places lines into doubt, that which, which uh, uh, irritates the drawing of lines. And therefore, in a kind of philosophical sense, there can be no architecture of public space. Because public space, uh, according to this definition, is exactly that which resists the definition uh, 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 of space public therefore as a kind of undoing of, 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 of definitions. This doesn't mean that it doesn't have a shape. You can be undone by something that's very, very clearly shaped. In fact, you're almost always undone by such a thing. A public space can be a room very clearly defined. Uh, it can be a website, it can be a blog, it can have a form, but the mechanism of that form is to undo uh, 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 a any sort of simple sense of uh, uh, stability. So in the end it's more like a liquid which gets us back to the first uh, 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 images. It could be that, 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 that what, what is, what is uh, so uh, beautiful about cities and so important is, is, it, is this kind of li liquidity, this sort of li liquid quality, the capacity of a city to, to undo, to to uh, 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 dissolve. And I say this only because um, we are about to put the liquids uh, inside us <laughs> in the reception. And I think doing that uh, will be a considerably wiser move for you uh, than to listen to me. Thank you. I, disculpa, pregunta para Mark. Eh, you have to answer some questions, so okay. you can answer. <laughs> so we have. There. Four. Four. Can you give us a minute? Quien levanto la mano va a hacer una pregunta. Allá. Uh, hello. Uh, I would like to go back to the beginning of your presentation, which yeah. was fantastic, by the way. Um, and uh, return to the map and this gap that Chile appears to be. And then um, think about what happened when Chile was actually drawn and discovered and, uh, well, basically founded by, by the Spaniards. And, and then we uh, are recently, are recently uh, getting to know that Chile wasn't, uh, Santiago wasn't actually uh, invented or created by the Spaniards, but it was actually um, an Inca city mm. and part of the Inca empire and whatever it, that means. I mean, the system, the communications, the everything. Yeah. Um, so, and I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm like really um, shaky when talking in public. Um, so, and think uh, about that um, that we think we know what Santiago is we think we know when it started when it was created but in fact we don't really know we are just getting to know the city uh, that Santiago really is uh, we know that it's connected to our, uh, an empire that we thought was just something very that belonged to somewhere else um, and then uh, comes the question or then I ask a question how can we care enough about the cities uh, if we don't really know what they are, if we are not sure of where they come from or where, well, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a great question. That, uh, I 
think what I think what I was trying to say, but you said it better, is that um, w when when you draw a map, it's always about it's not about discovery, it's about repression. So of course, the moment, as you say, the moment of the definition of Chile is the suppression of that which was there, that what that which could have been discovered, could have been welcomed, right? So again, in the, in the, in, the, in terms of hospitality, I could uh, embrace the strangeness that it must have been, the radical strangeness of, of encountering uh, uh, the Incas, right? And maybe even the word Inca probably is, is the beginning of that. Probably it's a Spanish word for something else, right? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the, the Inca right? so, empire. Right, so, so the mo but, but even, mm. even to call it Inca and yeah, to call it empire, empire is to yeah. place on it what we would expect it to be. Uh, even to call uh, let's say a capital city of an Inca empire is to see it the way we see it. So, so f I am, of course, am coming from the direction that says every time you draw a line, you are hiding uh, something. Um, and may I have a sort of strange way maybe to s say it. Uh, architecture is almost always built in the site of our maximum doubt. Right? I mean, the obvious example is a, is a tombstone. You place an object in, in this, exactly in the place of your greatest pain, which is that which you could never understand, that your loved one has gone, but you can't even, even the word gone is a kind of metaphor, like they went for a holiday or something. And actually a lot of religion is designed to tell you, yes, it's a holiday, and you can meet in a club med up in the sky eventually. Um, so you place the tombstone with the name of that which you cannot possibly understand, and it's a clearly defined form that stands in the place of your maximum insecurity and doubt. And almost you could say this is a rule of architecture, that it constructs itself in the places of our doubt. Uh, uh, family house. I, I must have family problems, no? The, the <laughs> uh, you don't, eh? Uh, but the family house. Uh, would anybody ever want the family house to show everybody in the street what happens on the inside? No. The purpose of the family house is to preserve the idea that there is a structure to the family that's relatively stable, that keeps going no matter what happens on the inside. So the house is, is not sheltering the family, but is sheltering the weirdness of family, right? So, so from this point of view, the drawing of the line that defines Chile, uh, in my view as an island, is an attempt to, as it were, place it under control by hiding what it is that we simply don't understand about it. Which is, uh, again, why I think it's so, so amazing the Atacama as the point of maximum clarity and vision. So basically this place uh, now, now is the you know, point from which we look, look out. Um, I mean, but your question was more, more interesting. You, you ended with, well, okay, if the city is that which undoes our ability to draw lines, how can we do something uh, good for it? Well, I think it suggests that um, doing good for a city is not about drawing lines. Many, maybe it, the really kind of uh, socially activist work of the architect, the planner, and so on is much more with an eraser, actually with kind of removing lines, or, or doing the analytical work to show that the line really has no force. Because, of course, you know, the tombstone, it can't do anything with this problem you have. It marks the problem, but cannot do anything about it. Uh, uh, the family house cannot engage with the complexity. So I think, of course, it's not a matter of saying, let's burn down the family houses, but, but, but understanding that the simple walls that define a house are not so simple and very complex. And then, for example, when you say, would like to make a public space, you will not be so inclined to draw a box in which will appear um, uh, the so-called public. By the way, the so-called public that appears in that box will be uh, surveilled f from all sides. So if I identify myself as a member of the public, I am immediately in a police file. And I'm not speaking here about, you know, the, uh, you know, the nightmare of, of Chile in the, in, the, in the recent decades. I'm just, just the general I, I am uh, uh, exposed in public space. So actually the drawing of a line uh, could be 
the, the last thing you would like to do for the public. So the question is, do you, do you kind of, uh, a little bit in a more terroristic way, uh, undo a little bit of the uh, structure of a city for, for in, the, in the name of a kind of fluidity? But these are like kind of empty comments, really. Uh, it's more like, um, how does one understand uh, ethical work in relationship to the question of the city? And I, I think it, it, genuinely ethical work has to do with uh, respect for the other. It means a, a complete embrace of the other. So it, it seems to me if you, if you respect the other, if you give the other the dignity that you would not even ask for for yourself, if, if you would do that, you are probably going to uh, uh, expose the city to be much more complex in its organization, its functioning, uh, than any map or any drawing that we, we do. And, and it seems to me that was exactly the experience of today, that very, very rarely was a kind of just a drawing on the wall and so on. It was much more about a series of questions and a series of strategies. I mean, it was fantastic work, I thought. I mean, I'm not a judge, but I think it was great. But I really think we should drink, you know. <laughs> no, I, mean, I mean, that's the one point on which I want you to listen. <laughs> Muchas gracias, Rodolfo.